Hey there, I'm Nicole Martin and you're watching Trending Now. More and more developments tonight on the Hockey Canada scandal that has captured headlines and has become the top trending topic across the country. The sports governing body continues to defend its leadership from a landslide of criticism over how it handled an alleged sexual assault. But pressure is mounting. A growing list of major sponsors are pulling their support. There needs to be wholesale change. They need to do it. They need to realize that uh, if, it, if we have to create an organization, get rid of Hockey Canada and create an organization called Canada Hockey instead, um, people will look at doing that. Also tonight, for the first time, we're hearing from the survivor who was sexually assaulted by Headley frontman Jacob Hogard as his sentencing hearing gets underway in Toronto. It's a heavy day here again on Trending Now as we dig through some of the most talked about stories of the day. More and more sponsors have had just about enough of Hockey Canada's management and how they handled disturbing sexual assault allegations involving eight players on the 2018 junior team. At this point in the day, it would almost be easier listing who hasn't removed funding from the organization. But here's a snapshot of the developments. After Tim Hortons dropped their sponsorship yesterday, the fallout continued for Hockey Canada. Tell us writing to Trending Now saying we are deeply disheartened by the lack of action and commitment from Hockey Canada to drive necessary cultural change. Another big one, Canadian Tire, who tells us, in our view, Hockey Canada continues to resist meaningful change and we can no longer confidently move forward together. Hockey Canada has completely lost the confidence of Canadians. Skip the Dishes says, like many Canadians, we have been deeply troubled by recent allegations and as such have since terminated our partnership with Hockey Canada. Scotiabank adding, we publicly called on Hockey Canada to hold the game to a higher standard and we are disappointed with the lack of progress to date. Ending with, the time for change is long overdue. Hockey Canada's leaders are losing support, that they no longer have support of their sponsors, of uh, Canadian uh, families that are sending their kids to, to play hockey. Like Tim Hortons, Sobeys dropped Hockey Canada, but says they will continue to support the women's national hockey team. Canada's sports minister with strong words for the organization's leadership today. So I hope that the, they understand the message and leave uh, before they burn it to the ground. I think that it needs new leaders, new directors and new experts uh, to renew this organization. It needs to be rebuilt. This all comes after Hockey Canada's interim chairwoman Andrea Skinner's testimony in Ottawa Tuesday. Clearly, these companies were not happy as she insisted that culture change can happen while maintaining current leadership like CEO Scott Smith. And I don't think it's in the in the best interest of hockey or Hockey Canada for, for this organization to be destroyed. I, I, don't, I don't think that a mass exit, if all the board were to resign and if all of senior management to be replaced, who would they be replaced with? What will that Ms. mean for hockey? Ms. How Skinner, will that impact me, the boys and girls? Let me be a little bit more specific then. Why is the leader of this organization being protected rather than being held accountable? And it's not just the highest profile corporate sponsors pulling the plug. Hockey Quebec will be withholding $3 player fees collected that go to Hockey Canada and the Ontario Hockey Federation is trying to do the same. With these calls for change growing, what will Hockey Canada's next step be? Joining us tonight is University of Guelph professor and sports management researcher Ann Pegarero. And let's get right to it. What do you make of these major sponsors dropping off and Hockey Canada's attitude toward the allegations and questions about their leadership? Well, I think through this entire situation with Hockey Canada, we've seen the sponsors be the voice of reason. Um, which probably is what wasn't what we expected. Uh, and the money talks, right? So they, they're they moving their money. This maybe, and we hope, will, will finally be something that Hockey Canada will listen to because they haven't listened to Canadians. They haven't listened to their members. Um, and maybe they'll listen to the money pulling away. In in terms of, of Hockey Canada's stance on this, I think we're seeing um, an organization that has been so insular and never been called to question in their activities. They're our largest NSO and, and I'm thinking that they're not used to actually having to be accountable. Uh, and, and their testimony in particular in front of the Senate hearings has come off as, as extremely out of touch with what Canadians are saying um, and what they want to hear from the, the organization that governs the game they love. You know, you're right. Listening to the testimony Tuesday, they seemed out to lunch when it came to Canadian stance on the leadership of this organization. What stands out to you, though, when it comes to oversight within Hockey Canada? 
Well, I think that uh, what we've got in terms of a governance model is is a similar model as every NSO has. It's a nonprofit corporation with a board that the executive uh, reports to. The differences we're finding from Hockey Canada is, first of all, that board has not, um, well, a volunteer hasn't uh, not been receiving gifts. I mean, and that's something normally you don't do as a board member. You don't receive gifts. And we are hearing stories of rings, uh, opulent dinners, a condo in Toronto, flat screen TVs, all of these things going to board members are not letting them be this impartial governing body. So that, that to me stood out in governance. I think also people are saying, you know, that the current executive hasn't been there that long and we should give them time. They haven't been in the role in Hockey Canada that long. They've been inside Hockey Canada for um, 20 plus years. And so if you've been a part of the culture that's been created, this situation we're in, I think that that you have to be able to look at yourself and realize you're not the person that can lead the organization out of this. And we are talking about Scott Smith remaining as a CEO. And can hockey within Canada go on without Hockey Canada in place? Hockey Canada doesn't keep the lights on in the local arena. It's parents, it's volunteers, it's local hockey associations. Really, hockey belongs to Canadians and not to the organization that governs it. And so I think that hockey can go on. It is going on um, and it will continue to go on. The, the key is that we need an organization that's going to oversee hockey that creates a positive sport experience for our young people and also governs the game at the uh, international level with, um, so, you know, an ethical approach. And we're not seeing that. So, yeah, I think hockey will go on. I think it's going to look different. We heard the prime minister say there could be even a new organization formed to govern hockey and move it right away from Hockey Canada. So, um I believe all of us as Canadians want the game to go on and it will. That's Professor Ann Pegarero, the Lang Chair in Sport Management at the University of Guelph. And we wanted to hear from our audience today. We asked you on Twitter, as the national organization loses trust with the public, what would you like to see happen? The majority of you, about 76%, said you would like to see Hockey Canada dissolved and start a fresh organization. The other 23% of you said management should be fired and new people hired. The drop in key sponsors comes after the interim and past board chairs were questioned by federal MPs in Ottawa this week. NDP MP Peter Julian spelled out to them where this organization stands with Canadians. Key parents across the country uh, want answers from Hockey Canada. They scrimp and save to register their kids in Hockey Canada programs and the revelations, both the allegations of sexual violence and sexual abuse, uh, and how that is handled within Hockey Canada, but also uh, the complete lack of financial transparency is profoundly disturbing to Canadian hockey parents. It's profoundly disturbing to the Canadian public, and that's why Hockey Canada has really lost the trust of, of Canadians. And tonight, Peter Julian joins us live. Peter, a whole lot has happened in the past two days since the testimony in Ottawa. To be blunt, is it time for Hockey Canada to just come to an end and start fresh with a new organization? Uh, it's an absolute crisis, and it, it's sad because this is our, our national winter sport. Canadians love hockey. Hockey parents put so much into making sure that their, their sons or daughters are in, in programs. It's sad to see the crisis in which Hockey Canada has embroiled itself, but there's only two doors. One door is for the for the organization to renew itself, and that means the existing leadership to leave. The other is to start afresh and, and build a, a new national organization. Uh, the status quo is simply untenable, and I think uh, the fact that you're, you're seeing such a reaction from the public, such mm -hmm. a reaction from the sponsors, uh, indicates that uh, we're now at the cliff and uh, Hockey Canada has to do some real soul searching. Definitely, Peter, and you mentioned it. Hockey Canada is just bleeding corporate sponsors tonight. Trudeau has floated the idea of replacing the league altogether. Would you be interested in having the federal government involved in that? Uh, I, I believe the federal government needs needs to have an important role of oversight. They let, let things uh, fester at Hockey Canada for far too long, and there are a number of other national sports organizations that have simply had no oversight from the federal government, despite the fact that the federal government, fed, Canadian taxpayers, are largely funding these organizations. So I believe the federal government does need to step up. I pushed 
for a complete audit of Hockey Canada, and this week the government uh, agreed that that had to happen. Uh, so we will finally be transparent, I think, on the finances of Hockey Canada and where this money, this sort of labyrinth of special funds and, and mm -hmm. hidden expenses uh, will actually come to light. And that's a transparency that hockey parents and, and the Canadian public expect. So that, that is an important step. But for the chair of the board to, to say everything's fine and we're moving forward and, and I give the leadership team an A uh, yeah. is so disconnected from how people are feeling across the country. Really, and it'll be interesting to see where this audit takes us because we know of at least two funds that were used for payouts for sexual assaults. We can't forget that the real victim in all of this is the woman who alleges she was sexually assaulted by eight players of the Canadian junior team in 2018. What message is this fallout of Hockey Canada sending to all organizations going forward? Well, and she's sadly not the only victim. There are horrific allegations dating back to the 2003 World Cup. There are a number of allegations around uh, around horrific sexual violence and sexual abuse. And, and each time Hockey Canada has not responded in the way that they, they should, dating back to the days of Sheldon Kennedy and his uh, tragic revelations where Hockey Canada had committed to put in place a series of mechanisms that they never, they never did, they never followed up. And so what this leads, I think, uh, to for all of us who love our national winter sport, who, who adore hockey, uh, is that we really need to put in place a national organization where there's a leadership that is transparent and accountable, that we have confidence in, and that has zero tolerance for any type of sexual violence or sexual abuse. Absolutely, and I mean, more and more developments every day, so we'll just have to wait and see. But that's NDP MP Peter Julian live with us tonight. Thank you, Peter. Th thank you. The next story contains some graphic details that may be disturbing. We've been following the sentencing hearing today for Headley frontman Jacob Hogard. Manisa Danabalan is live with us tonight. And Manisa, we're hearing from the woman who was assaulted, saying her life has been shattered by this attack. Nicole, we have the devastating impact statement from the survivor to tell you about tonight, but the sentencing hearing took a turn today. The judge did not deliver a sentence after some issues were raised with evidence in a forensic psychiatric report, which named some of Hogarth's sexual partners. The judge saying that it will take some time to evaluate the report. Canadian musician Jacob Hogard and the rest of the world heard from the survivor of a violent assault within a Toronto courtroom. I would lay in my bed and cry myself to sleep until I was numb. I went to sleep praying that I wouldn't wake up the next morning. Six years later, I still have these nights. She went on to say, I was ridiculed online by complete strangers. Women I've never even met were making t-shirts and signs in support of the man that raped me. Jacob Hogard was found guilty of sexual assault causing bodily harm earlier this year. It was a 2016 incident that happened in a Toronto hotel room. Andrea Gunraj from the Canadian Women's Foundation says it takes time for survivors to come out and share their story. Sometimes coming forward triggers more violence, triggers abusive comments and abusive dynamics from other people. It might create criticism and judgment and you might feel that your whole world is falling apart. The Ottawa woman assaulted by Hogard, who cannot be identified because of a publication ban, read, I distanced myself from everything I loved. I lost out on major job opportunities at work. I missed important moments with my loved ones that I will never get back. The toll is huge on people's lives. She closed her statement with this. I would like to offer a piece of advice to Mr. Hogard. In his own words, don't worry, it will be over soon. The woman is also suing Hogard for $2.8 million in damages. The singer was also charged with sexual assault in March in a separate case for an incident that allegedly took place in June 2016 in Kirkland Lake. A pretrial for that case is expected to take place mid-October. The Hogard case is among a number of other artists who are also facing sexual assault accusations like Marilyn Manson and Wynn Butler of Arcade Fire. Music expert and Canadian radio broadcaster Alan Cross says there needs to be a shift in culture within the music industry. I mean, it is an industry built on fantasy. It is a, an industry built on dreams, an industry built on sex, drugs, and rock and roll. There's been a lot of, you know, encouragement and toleration of, of bad behavior over many, many decades. And it's going to take a very long time to change some of these attitudes. He says there have been changes, but there is still a long way to go. 
Hogart has been out on bail since he was charged. The hearing is expected to continue later this month, and the Crown has requested six to seven years behind bars. Nicole? That's certainly a lengthy time. Thank you so much, Manisa. If you or someone you know has experienced sexual assault, you're not alone. There are resources that can help and offer support for both survivors and the people closest to them. There's no national support helpline in Canada, but each province has their own services available. We have the information for Ontario's various supports on the screen here. Kids Help Phone also provides the ability to speak to a professional counselor 24 hours a day. Well, new tonight on Trending Now, the RCMP say their investigation has revealed that Miles Sanderson, a suspect in a mass stabbing in Saskatchewan, killed all 11 people on his own. They're completing 250 interviews, processing over 670 exhibits, reviewing and following up on over 100 911 calls for service. Investigators have determined that Damian Sanderson was a victim of homicide by Miles Sanderson. Miles Sanderson committed all of the homicides alone. Tonight, Saskatchewan RCMP now say Damian Sanderson was a victim, not a killer. Police say their investigation shows his brother's brother, Miles Sanderson, killed all 11 people during the mass stabbing on the James Smith Cree Nation and the nearby village of Weldon back on September 4th. Damian had initially been named as a suspect. Despite not being a killer, the RCMP say there is still evidence Damian was involved in the planning of the attacks. Since collected and analyzed by investigators to date, have determined Damien was involved in the initial planning and preparation for the attacks on September 4th. We are still investigating the extent of Damien's involvement. And to the latest in Thailand now, we want to warn you the images in this story are disturbing. The death toll from a massacre at a nursery in northeastern Thailand is now at 37. Those dead include 24 children and one pregnant woman. The attacker is also dead. 10 others are injured. Authorities say most of the deaths were the result of stab wounds. They say the children who ranged in age from two to five were taking their lunchtime nap when this massacre occurred. And the killer was identified as a former police officer who was dismissed from his post last year over drug allegations. He was also facing trial on a drugs charge. Authorities say the man had been in court earlier in the day and then went to the daycare center to pick up his child. When he did not find his child there, that's when police said he began the killing spree. The man then went to his house and took his own life after killing his wife and child. Now, reaction to the devastating attack poured, poured in online. United Nations Secretary General Antonio Guterres tweeted in part, learning centers should be spaces where children feel safe, never targeted. And UK Prime Minister Liz Truss also tweeted her condolences and shock. Coming up on Trending Now, the latest stories you've been reacting to online. Don't go anywhere. Trending Now is back right after this. Welcome back. From celebrity feuds to sport fights to new trailers, here's your look at what's trending now online. The Kardashians and Kanye West are publicly fighting yet again after his fashion show at Paris Fashion Week. West took to Instagram to praise conservative commentator Candace Owens for being, quote, the only public figure to say that it was wrong for the Kardashians to keep me from seeing my daughter. Chloe, the sister of West's ex-wife Kim, responded to the allegation in a comment she posted, yay, I love you, don't want to do this on social media, but you keep bringing it here. You are the father of my nieces and nephews, and I'm trying to be respectful, but please stop tearing Kimberly down and using our family when you want to deflect. West fired back, calling the Kardashians liars and accusing them of kidnapping his daughter Chicago on her birthday. It was only two weeks ago that West did an exclusive interview on Good Morning America apologizing for his behavior toward Kim. This is the mother of my children, and I apologize for any stress that I have caused. Now to beef on the basketball court, ESPN is reporting that Golden State Warriors player Draymond Green threw a punch at teammate Jordan Poole at practice yesterday. The two players have been verbally fighting prior to some pushing, which escalated when Green took a swing and made contact with Poole. Poole wasn't hurt by the punch and completed his workout before leaving practice. Warriors team officials are looking into the fight. Green has a history of challenging teammates in practice and game settings, even getting into it with Drake one time on the sidelines. 
Sticking with basketball, LA Lakers player LeBron James may soon move from playing for a team to owning one. I would love to uh, bring a team here at some point. That would be amazing. I want the team here, Adam. Thank you. James said he would like to own a franchise in Las Vegas if the NBA ever goes ahead with its long rumored plans for an expansion team. Vegas has become a hotbed for sports in recent years, adding the NHL's Golden Knights in 2017 and the NFL's Raiders in 2020. Now to trending tech, Google has unveiled the Google Pixel 7. Google says the 6.3 inch Pixel 7 has updated features on its camera, screen and battery. It'll cost you a pretty penny though. Prices start at $820 Canadian. Google also announced its first ever Pixel smartwatch. The watch is Google's first wearable piece of tech that has health features from Fitbit after Google bought the company last year. And the Emmy goes to The White Lotus! Murray Bartlett, The White Lotus. Mike White, The White Lotus. Mike, Mike White, White, The White Lotus. Lotus. Emmy's darling, The White Lotus, is gearing up for season two with a new trailer. In the show's universe, The White Lotus is an international chain of expensive resorts. Season one was set at a resort in Hawaii. Season two will take place at the chain's location in Sicily. You guys are here to learn about your Sicilian roots. Sounds like a fun boys trip. Well, it's supposed to be a boys trip. We're on a family vacation right now, and it's just the three of us, because all the women in our family hate you. Please, can we just drop it? The White Lotus season two premieres October 30th on HBO and HBO Max. <laughs> The wait is over. We can stop losing sleep because we finally know what Chris Pratt's Mario voice sounds like in the Super Mario Bros. animated movie. Turns out he sounds just like Chris Pratt. The movie will also feature Anya Taylor-Joy, Jack Black, Seth Rogen, and more. Charles Martinet, who voiced Mario and Luigi in the games, will also have various voice cameos. Super Mario Bros. lands in theaters in April. And that's this episode of Trending Now. For a full update on your weekly highlights, be sure to check out our YouTube channel and podcast dropping every Friday on Apple, Spotify, and YouTube. That's our time for tonight, but I'm sure we'll be seeing you in what's trending tomorrow.